What's up locals? Well, we are back again. Today we look at a disc that I've been really curious about and that is the new Innova Star Rolo. Uh, this disc, Innova kind of smartened up to the idea that they wanted to make a um, really versatile roller disc. Uh, this disc has a really beautiful understable profile to it, meaning that in some cases, as you see here, you know, I could release this disc almost flat, giving it some height, and that disc, I'm actually gonna get like quite a bit of distance out of this disc in the air, and it's gonna basically start to knife over, give me that angle that I need. When you're throwing a roller, uh, you're gonna release this disc uh, to land on the ground at somewhere between a 45 and a 60 degree angle so that that disc can basically come back across the fairway. Typically, it will flip back over and then S its way back to finish out the roll. This disc, um, so comfortable. Um, you know, some brands still have problems with some flashing, which flashing is that like under edge of the disc uh, where that edge can be a little bit sharp um, just because of the mold, the way the disc comes out of the mold. This disc is like rounded on the inside here and because of that low parting line, this disc is extremely understable. This disc, if you were someone that was very new to the sport, had a very slow arm speed, you could use this disc in a variety of settings. Um, again, releasing it on a slight um, hyzer angle would allow you to um, practice a disc getting it to flip up to flat. The reason why we do this is it usually will tend to give you more distance. Uh, there's a reason why the pros use that uh, technique. But because this disc is so um, understable, I was able to release this disc fairly flat to get it to turn um, into a roller pretty much effortlessly. And I think, you know, also I'm gonna try a couple where even standing still, if I can get this thing out where the outside edge of the disc is up, meaning in an Anheuser angle or an Annie, try to get that disc down to bite and roll um, because uh, a lot of players, I think a lot of people shy away from the roller shot because of the technical aspect of it. There's a need to get that disc to land uh, somewhere between a 45 and 60 degree angle. And if you get it to land too aggressively, it will cut roll. And if you get it to land kind of vertically, then it's gonna roll way off to the side. So the like risk reward, um, you know, scales on this, on this kind of a shot, I know for myself, I've usually steered away from it because I thought, you know, if I make a mistake here, the mistake could leave me like way further. Yes, it could benefit me and I could get, you know, an extra 20, 30, 40, 50 feet out of that disc. Um, but do I really want to risk like, you know, an improvement of 30, 40 feet for the, you know, very possible outcome that this disc ends up like rolling way to the side or actually leaving me like hundreds of feet further. But this disc is, I, I would say this disc is a little bit different. If you're on a course with like a nice flat fairway, kind of like what we're looking at here, where you can get this thing out, you know, as long as you release this thing, I, I will say, I think it takes a little bit of field work. It's a very quick learning curve though for this disc. I think this disc offers a lot of upside. Um, so I wanted to try this. I'm gonna do a standstill real quick here. I just wanna see if I can get this thing out on a little ante, see if I can get this thing to turn over and still give us that sort of like true roller angle. I'm just gonna to try to give this a bit of ante. And I'm doing this as a standstill shot so that I can make sure uh, that I've kind of reduced my power. I'm not actually gonna get my full body into this. I'm gonna to try to ease up a little bit to see if I can still get a roller out of a standstill. Yeah, not as strong of a shot, not as not as uh, like powerful of a release, but that disc still got down on that ideal 45 to 60 degree angle. You can see that kind of cut across the fairway. Obviously, in a standstill, I didn't have like sort of as much power, and I did that on purpose to see, you know, if I could, you know, I'm just trying to envision scenarios where, you know, maybe I'm pinched off on a shot where I don't have the ability to do a run up, or I've got a bush or a tree behind me, so I'm kind of stuck, you know, can I get this thing out on a roller if I'm stuck? You know, I'm, I'm always trying to think about ways to test a disc that would mimic, you know, a core situation. So, um, you know, so far, I think this disc is. Um, really great whether you're a newer player with a slower arm the Rolo may not be a roller disc it might be you know a turnover disc for you uh, you know we were just talking about the cat merch stingray uh, in a previous video I'll leave a link to that up in the cards here I think it's a set um, but 
you know, any of these kind of understable discs offer um, so much versatility, whether it's a roller, whether it's a flip up shot, or if you're newer to the sport and you've got a slower arm speed and you're still kind of dialing things in here, and you want to try to get a flat release happening with a little bit of a turnover line, uh, these discs kind of all offer uh, a lot of versatility. So I'm a big fan of understable discs, especially as someone that's just been kind of working this year on a forehand, you know, I've always depended on understable discs uh, to, you know, help me kind of get through my round with obviously as low a score as possible as we're always trying to do. So. Um, hope you enjoyed this video, uh, we've got so much more coming this fall, more reviews on gear, on discs, uh, and much much more very very soon. So thank you so much as always for watching, we will see you in the next one. My name is Ryan, this is Local, we are local.